What's going on YouTube? This is Marcus back for another video. I'm here to do my review for Greenleaf um, Season 3. I believe this is episode 8. Um, so the episode starts off and we see that it is time for Bishop's um, Silver Jubilee celebrating his 25th anniversary. Um, you know, the church is all decorated and decked out and you know, um, Bishop and Gigi were kind of walking through the church and she was looking at everything and he kind of makes mention that he had decorated the church or has been planning the event by himself and Gigi says, you know, um, you're going to need some assistance here at the church, you know, to do all of the things that mom used to do as far as making the church look good and, you know, things of that nature. And he says, well, I think I did a pretty good job. And she was like, well, yeah, that was for today, but even you said yourself that it took a toll on you. You're definitely going to need some assistance. So, um, we see a scene where, um, Bishop is going to his office and he runs into Kareem and he was like, you know, what a surprise or something to that nature because he did mention that, excuse me, she was supposed to have been assisting him with the Jubilee, but she's been helping Lady May with her, um, event. Now... I thought that their events were supposed to be on the same day because that was the reason why they were having a big issue when she found out he was doing his Jubilee. I thought that was going to be the same day. But anyway, I don't know. Um, and we see that the divorce papers have came. If y'all hear some noise in the background, that's um, the coffee maker. I didn't realize it was that loud. But anyway... Um, the divorce papers came and so he takes the divorce papers and goes into the office and we see that he was kind of reluctant to sign. It's obvious that neither one of them wants to, wants to file for divorce, but they too, they too proud and too egotistical to put their differences aside and, and work on their marriage. So, we are back at Percy's house. Um... It kind of seems to me like... Percy is kind of getting to a point where it's like, like Bishop, girl, you done been here long enough. Like, when when are you going to leave? Because he asked the question that now that you and May are done and she got the house, you know, what arrangements have been made? Um, you know, in other words, like, girl, because my thing is, I understand that sometimes in divorce, a lot of times it may be unexpected. And so sometimes, you know, you may be in a bind where you're not able to just move into your own place or you may have to rely on a friend or something like that. But even in that instance, you need to be making arrangements to um, try to try, try to find you somewhere else until, you know, things settle. And he says, uh, Bishop says that the divorce paper threw me a bit and Percy says, don't let them sit too long. You have some uh, uh, living to do. So Gigi and Bishop come together to talk about um, the Greenleaf Estate, and he asked about Sophia. Um, now, Roche, uh, now Gigi asks, um, well, let me, so, he, he tells, uh, Gigi that he's gonna pay Sophia a visit. So, Gigi goes in to ask him about Rochelle, you know, asking him how much money did you give her and whatever. Um, and, you know, Bishop whole thing is he feel like Gigi that May has gotten into Gigi's head and Gigi says, you know, no, this is ain't got nothing to do with mama. This is me. You know, I don't trust her. I've never trusted her because Bishop's whole thing is like, if you don't trust her, why are you working with her? And she pretty much told him, the only, I, I wanted to draw her close. You know, the saying that keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Sometimes you have to pull people in and, 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 and treat them nice or, or fake like you, they friends so you can, you know, figure out what, what it is that they really up to. And that's pretty much what she's doing with Rochelle. But I think that Roche, I think that Rochelle knows that Gigi don't quite trust her, and that's why Rochelle is very careful with how she moves and how she acts. Um, so Bishop is on the way to see Sophia. He sees. <laughs> He goes past Charity's room and he sees Kevin and Nathan are there. I mean, Kevin and Aaron are now there playing with Nathan. Um, and so when Bishop leaves out the room, Aaron walks up to Bishop and says, you know, my daddy got pancreatic cancer. He's called you a few times. Um, 
But you know, Bishop ain't really been, ain't really cared for Lionel like that ever since he found out that he had been sleeping around with May. And Kevin says, "Girl, are you on speaking terms?" Uh, I mean, Bishop asked Aaron, "Were they on speaking terms?" Uh, speaking terms, and Aaron says, "Barely, but he's sick." But, and 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 I I don't know if it, well obviously it was because you know the man is gay. Um, but it's like, girl, you about to die soon, so you need to be trying to make amends and 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 right your wrongs. Um. So Bishop makes it to Sophia's room, and he asks her, you know, you got a second for an old man. And he assures her that although Lady Lady May and him have their differences, he'll be around. Oh. And, you know, she invites him in or whatever. And he says that I noticed that the Bible I gave you is out of rotation. In other words, you ain't been reading your Bible. Um, and she says, well, I should just give it back to you. And he tells her, hold on, for, hold on to it for a while. And she tells him that she hates her life. And he lets her know, you know, that he knows how he's feel. How he feels since, you know, he's been dealing with Parkinson's disease. Now, let me just say this. I feel like if Sophia had been a little bit older and had had more life experience and had more experience in God, this particular thing wouldn't have shaken her as bad. And what I mean by it, if she had already been married and had children and then she had to get her ovaries removed, it may not have shaken her that bad. Or if she had been the type that didn't, that had said she never wants to have kids, maybe this would have shaken her. But because, you know, she had already spoken that she wanted to have kids and whatever, um, you know, it had shaken her. And then as far as Bishop is concerned, you know, Bishop has been allegedly saved for, you know, for some years. And so, and he was older when he got diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. So, um, and it's crazy because... Before this particular scene, I forgot that he had Parkinson's disease because it's been a while since we've seen him take pills or even make mention of it. Um, but this episode was the first time in a while that we've seen evidence of it. You know, because throughout the episode, he's constantly stretching his hands to help um, alleviate the, the pain. Um... But he tells Sophia that he understands why she stays holed up in her room as, you know, you get to avoid everybody's clumsily stated concern because she tells pretty much was like every time she go downstairs, people are always, you know, you know, asking her how she's feeling and whatever, whatever. And she just like, girl, I don't have time for that. Um, he tells her that it's a fact of life that the body eventually falls apart and everything is taken away in the end. And he invites her to come to church on Sunday for his silver jubilee. And he says, God has given me a special special message just for you. Um, so Bishop goes back to Percy's house where he sees Percy's friend Teresa standing alone. And she got on this little skimpy black dress showing all of her shape. Um, he asks her, is Percy's around? She says, no, he's conked out. And she tells him that she can stick around. And he tells like, girl, no, thank you. So the next morning, Percy wakes up and he encourages, when Percy wakes up, he, you know, encourages Bishop to mend fences with Lionel, despite his affair with Lady May. And he says, you only get a few people in life you can work things out with. He may be one of yours. Um, The next thing we see uh, Bishop going over to Jacob's house, um, and it was Jacob, Bishop, and the, the son at the house. And he says, well, you know, where's Carissa? And he says, well, she felt like... Oh, excuse me. She felt like it would be good for us to have some alone time. You know, I'm not really... Me and her aren't really on good terms. And he says, because of what went down with you and Tasha. And he was like, girl, what you talking about? He said, you know, when I came to your office the other day, or came to see the other, way, it, other day, it seemed like it was something going on. He says, no. I don't roll that way no more, Pop. Um, he says, you sure? He says, yeah. Okay, good. So he pretty much tells Jacob that the divorce papers came, but he couldn't bring himself to sign the papers. Um, and he says that, you know, it's not about having doubts. 
you know, it's complicated. I don't see any way forward that looks right. The papers are sitting in my briefcase like a bomb. And so Jacob tells him not to sign them, at least, at least not right now until he's truly ready because, um, you know, a lot of times people make decisions, you know, hastily or make this jump to jump to make decisions too quick and then you, you live to regret them in the end. Sometimes you don't live to regret them. Um, so it's time for Bishop's Jubilee, but before it goes down, he has a, a, a talk with Charity. Um, and we see that Charity has been feeling a little bit better. Um, but it, 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 we see that he's feeling, she's feeling some type of way about the fact that, um, you know, X and Aaron, uh, excuse me, Kevin and Aaron are not only planning on moving in together, but they plan on have getting married. And she says, why does everyone get their fairy tale ending except me? And Bishop admits that he has similar feelings when he sees Lady May not skipping a beat as their divorce is coming at a steady pace. Um... But it, he says that, you know, whenever he thinks about, you know, that or, you know, opening up a newspaper and seeing what Holy Ruckus Grace is causing, he listens to Charity CD or watches one of Ch Jacob's sermons online. And, you know, he's able to thank God for May giving him the children and they was able to raise them together. Um... So we get to a scene where, you know, Bishop asked Charity, like, you know, what are you going to sing? And she says, if I can help somebody. And so he asked her, you know, if they could sing. You know, they get up there, they sing. They sounded good. Bishop, can, I didn't know Bishop can sing a little bit. So Grace gets up to introduce Bishop. And she basically said, talks about how, you know, that her daddy has always had faith in her. Um, even when she wasn't doing the right thing, you know, Dad, Bishop is a man of faith and, you know, he doesn't walk by sight. And she says, we all owe so much to the faith that the bishop has had in us. And so she tells the people, girl, I want you to welcome him with holy enthusiasm. And when he walks up, he whispers to Grace, Rochelle is not what you think. And she says, I hope not. Oh, I hope you're right. Um... And so at the end, uh, Connie tells Bishop, oh, that was a good message. I think uh, pretty much tell her, like, girl, Lady May ain't going to be able to top this. And he was like, it's not a competition. He says, yes, it is. So he calls Sophia. You know, he wants to talk to her. When it becomes clear that Sophia was not moved by the spirit, she says, I don't think I have a spirit. And so he invites her to this office to tell her the meaning of life. And he compares life to a runaway train and how our parents didn't intentionally bring us into a world that they had no control over. Um, and he says, God, the grand conductor of this runaway train, needs our help in letting people on the train know that he loves them and he's trying to bring this train to safe, uh, to a safe halt. Um, he tells her that happiness isn't the absence of sadness. It's being in the adventure of life in God's world with others. Um... And so he um, tells her, you know, I just want you to be happy. I want to see that smile on your face again. And and let me also say this. I feel like, now I understand when you see somebody who was on fire for God and was living for God and doing, you know, doing things for God, it is very disheartening to see them do a complete 180 where now they don't want nothing to do with God. They don't want to go to church. They don't want to do none of that. But at the same time, you have to let people go through things on their own and and you know prayerfully they're able to bounce back and come back around and sometimes they don't um but the last thing you want to do is to make the person feel like you're trying to stuff god down their throat um because it was obvious that you know to me it was obvious that Sophia wasn't really stood, didn't want to want to talk about none of that stuff. And so, um, we see later on in the episode, he does eventually sign the divorce papers. He takes the papers to May. May says, you know, ask because he's told her that he had already signed the papers, and she says why, and she he tells her, 
you know, I don't feel like I had, uh, I don't feel like I have a right to this marriage or whatever. So he goes back to Corinne, tells her to send a paper to the lawyer, and he says, you just missed Sophia. So when he goes in the office, we see that Sophia had, I think he she had returned the Bible that he gave her. So we see that, you know, his little story or his little anecdote, whatever you call it, it, it didn't really do much for her. Um... So we see that Bishop is back at Lionel's house. Um, Bishop asks him where his company is for the night, and Percy tells him that sometimes he has the curb has to curb that appetite out of self respect. You never forget your pan for it, no matter how good those women act. And he tells Bishop that he's lucky to have that young woman Rochelle, who is willing to rub his feet and more. And so we see this is the scene where he's stretching his hands again, and he goes and takes the pills. So the next time we see Rochelle, and she's in the bishop's office, and he asks her, like, girl, what you doing in my life? He was like, I'm an old man. My hands shake. You know, my body is not what it used to be. What do you want from me? Like, girl, there's plenty of young studs out there that, that would love to jump on you, girl, but you chasing after me. Like, girl, what's the tease? So she was like, so you feel like I'm using you with something? And he was like, I don't know. So she says, girl, pull out that phone and, 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 and pull up that app I showed you. And it was an app that basically shows him his bank account, girl. I don't know how much money was in there, but he lifted up his glasses like, girl, is that all is That all me? And she was like, so who's using who? And so it's so funny that the whole purpose for her stepping on the scene is to try to get dirt on them and to get back at them, but she's quick to flip the scene on him. And so she get mad like, girl, was getting ready to leave, and he was like, I'm sorry, girl, I never doubt you again. And he put his face on her face, and I'm just like, girl... She can, Latoya can act her butt off. So, we see what Bishop goes to, um, to the assisted living facility and he goes to see Lionel. But before he goes to Lionel, he sees this woman who was crying and she talks about how she was upset because she you know, had to drop, leave her dad at the assisted living facility because she talks about how, you know, she has kids and she has to work and stuff and she's not able to give him all of the care that he needs. Um, and so Bishop basically assures her, like, sometimes, you know, the things we do out of love, it may not seem like it's love, but, you know, if you had been continue trying to do the thing that you have to do on a regular basis, along with taking care of him, it would have been more detrimental to him than hurtful. Um, and so he says, well, can I pray for you? And then he said this little short, quick prayer. I'm like, girl... That wasn't no prayer. That was more of a declaration. But anyway, um, so he goes in there to see Lionel. Now, maybe I missed something, but how did Lionel know that Bishop knew about them having an affair? Because Lionel told him, like, girl, you know, I'm not asking you to forgive me. You know, pretty much I already know why you came here. Bishop tells him, girl, um... It was the betrayal of a friend that broke Jesus' heart. Y'all remember, he was betrayed by one of his own, by Judas, girl. Um, and he says, I forgive you, but this is the last time we will see each other in life. Um, well, in this life. I honestly feel like when it's all said and done, especially if Rochelle and Tasha Skank's plan actually goes the way that they're making it seem like it's going, Bishop and Lady May are going to have to come back together. Because um, they're going to have to come together to fight whatever this is that that they all got going on. Um, but that was pretty much it from Greenleaf, y'all. Girl, I didn't review last week. Um, the way my work schedule was set up, I wasn't able to watch it and then it... it the next week rolled in, I said, girl, I just skip over. But what I will say is, girl, Zora, I hope you get a grip before it's too late because um that dude is gonna is gonna is is gonna give it to you. But anyway, thank you all for watching. Be sure to like this video, share this video wherever you like to share videos. Also be sure to comment now in the comment section down below. Um, you know, I do respond to the comments. I like to interact with y'all also. Um be sure to subscribe if you're not already done so and click that notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I post uploads. Um, also, be sure to follow me on my social media, which is in the description box down below. 
And also, if you missed any of my previous Greenleaf reviews, the link to that playlist will be in the description box down below. And I will talk to y'all later. Peace.